cut. Bam. Slides ready. And welcome to the How to Governance session. A walkthrough of how the DAO functions, and in particularly, uh, this information comes from the Bankless DAO handbook. Um, I should put the uh, have to find the bam here it is drop the link in the chat here to the B Dow handbook put it in the uh, slides real quick in case folks want to reference this information or go back to it, there's the Notion page for this workshop. And how to governance. Uh, essentially, the mission of Bankless DAO is to go bankless by creating user friendly on ramps for people to discover decentralized financial technologies through education media and culture our vision is financial independence decentralized work and creative freedom accessible to all our main values of the DAO is education integrity decentralization and culture our governance Essentially, decisions regarding governance, treasury projects, and proposals are through a democratic process um, using our forums and snapshot um, and lots of discussion in Discord, sometimes Seshbot polls. Bank holders on snapshot ratify decisions through off chain votes using the snapshot platform. Um, this is where we formalize and ratify, you know, DAO-wide decisions. Routine decision-making happens informally in the Discord channels, generally through SeshBot polls, and even in the forums when decisions or information requires a level of consensus that, you know, uh, requires, you know, a lot of bankless DAO members or DAO members from different groups. Essentially, we have soft consensus. Um, a lot of times these are called temp checks, um, but essentially soft consensus gauges support from the community um, via Discord polls or general posts in our forums. Oftentimes, the soft con consensus temp checks will be used to uh, better develop proposals or initiatives or interest in projects before a more formal proposal and consensus is needed, usually for funding. Formal proposals go through two stages on the DAO-wide level. Um, first is usually a draft of your proposal, and then based on the feedback from that proposal, uh, the proposal gets posted on the Bankless DAO forum. Again, there's usually a chance for um, additional comments. And then if needed, um, that proposal, you know, may be good as is, you know, especially if it's for a project or organizational unit, um, or it may require a uh, more formal process to change the actual DAO governance call those bankless DAO improvement proposals.
proposals, or BDIPs for short. So essentially there's grant proposals, um, which is requesting funds, funding proposals, and then improvement proposals, which are actually changes to the handbook uh, and or constitution. Each member in the forums has one vote. Forum voting is not token weighted or gated. Um, forum proposals require 70% approval to pass for funding proposals. Um, oftentimes there's requirements for proposals depending on how much bank is being requested for funding. So if it's less than 1 million bank to funding, it should be posted in the forums for one week. If it's greater than 1 million bank, it should be posted in the forum for two weeks. And there are quorum requirements um, for grant funding and for the improvement proposals. Um, generally, quorum is defined as the minimum number of voters based on amount of bank. Actually, this makes no sense. Gonna add a comment. Boom. Um, snapshot. So once votes pass in the forums, um, if they require a snapshot vote, then it's taken to snapshot. Essentially, once a proposal for funding meets quorum, it goes through the Grants Committee and through the Grants Committee process. Um, this may or may not include going to snapshot. Um, snapshots are gated. They are gated by two token holders. You need at least one bank token to vote in snapshot proposals. And snapshot proposals, you know, the more bank you have, the more uh, power or weight your vote has. And generally, proposals run for seven days. Um, and snapshot require more than 66% approval. Quick question, Ernest. Yep. Uh, go back one slide for me real quick. Yeah, is this, is this factual? The off-chain vo uh, voting tool? Yep. Wouldn't it be an on-chain voting tool? Because it requires, like, it's all saved on-chain and it requires the bank token to participate in? Um... Seems yeah, to me like Robert Sesh would be off-chain. Isn't the... Oh, look at that. They define themselves as an off-chain voting platform. Yeah, that's the biggest right. complaint about Snapshot is that it's technically off chain. Um, Today I learned. It is, you know, there is validation, but it's technically off chain. All right, well, thanks for checking on that. Learned something new. Yeah, I know, and I didn't know, yeah, I got to confirm that too. Um, I, I, uh, I'm going to add that we just need to check an update quorum. I think that'll just be something along the lines of dynamic quorum, or grants committee has a quorum chart or something. Uh, yeah, this may change next season we just want to check that um i don't know seven if, days right now yeah and does snapshot have is it always the same quorum approval or right is funding different from b dips good question i do not know the answer my gut says it would stay the same but with the voting population growing and shrinking the way that it does. I wonder if that's not true. 
So we just need to update that. Boom, boom, boom. But very important to understand quorum. Quorum is a consensus based mechanism. Um, once snapshot is passed, if a proposal um, passes and their grants request is accepted uh, and goes through the grants committee review process, well, then the Dow Treasury multi slash constitution. This may happen through um, a governance department next season. Um, it's one of the current discussions going on in the forums. Um, but essentially, once the DAO decides to make a decision, one of the departments have to operationalize that decision and update any governance docs that it may relate to. And there's a nice format for the improvement proposals in order to be able to do that. Thank you, Zipa. Um, so what are the different, that's kind of the, the decision-making process of the DAO. Um, it's also generally the same model that's used for decision-making within guilds and departments, except that the subunits within the DAO rarely use snapshot and rarely use weighted voting. Most of the decision making within actual subunits themselves are actually decided by those subunits. Um, again, with kind of the, the same values as the DAO, but every organizational unit is somewhat di different and has their own unique culture. And so we see this play out differently in different guilds. And, you know, projects. Guilds are essentially talent pools for projects. And according to our constitution or handbook, they are professional associations of subject matter experts. Their goal is to focus on onboarding, education, and community building. Um, and guilds often submit funding proposals to the grants committee every season. Guilds are self-managed units within the DAO. Typically, they are work groups or work streams. And I would add that they are, you know, cross-functional in nature. Um, they may possess their own internal multi-signature wallets and develop their own internal governance. So we have guilds, we have projects. Projects are mostly autonomous. Um, they're designed to make an impact and accomplish a specific goal. Proposals must be submitted through the, the same DAO governance process as other projects or as other units within the DAO. Um, most projects submit funding requests on a seasonable basis if they you know, remain active and continue towards their goal. Um, some projects start within guilds or within departments and you know if, if they develop you know can become their own uh, project not dependent on a guild or department. Projects don't necessarily have some type of revenue model necessarily associated with them. Projects that do have revenue models associated with them and that create content, social media. Again, we are, we are a, a, a media DAO. Um, and so a common type of project in the DAO that generally has some type of revenue you know aim are called media nodes um, these are projects that you know specifically create media content and share the breakfast DAO brand generally they strive to have that revenue share agreement um, but we're still figuring out how to do that and 
some media nodes are still struggling to figure out you know how to generate a revenue Again, these media nodes may follow their own governance documentation and election procedures and you know have their own rules for modification of their governance documents we also have what's this say aha we need to add departments especially i think uh since it seems like we got some definitions going on in the uh, the forum regarding departments. But essentially, departments are um, they're units that are essentially taking care of specific operations or functions within the DAO. Um, we spent the last year and a half figuring out you know what kind of operations uh we can expect to you know be a dow to be a, a a media company and mostly these expected functions or work streams that have come up in various areas throughout the dow um we're in agreement that these functions are going to persist and so there are departments to kind of operationalize those functions um, and do the expected work. Currently have a marketing department, education department, ops department, and treasury department. And there is discussions on a govern governance department as well. Another organizational unit in the DAO is the grants committee, which Elections for grant committee members are currently going on, nominations. Um, grants committee usually consists of five to seven members. Grants committee <clears throat> has their own review process for how they review projects or grants for projects and units and quorum. <clears throat> and they have their own quorum requirements for how they agree as well. Their quorum is usually five members. They usually have you know, two leads, and they generally serve a six-month term. They approve the seasonal funding of guilds and projects, and they're also responsible for vetting uh, the organizational units as they submit their funding um, and KPIs to be tracked. Election of the Grants Committee is under the governance of the DAO, and the guidelines are listed in the handbook, um, as well as their Notion page. And that is essentially how to governance in Bankless DAO. Um, any questions? So this is a really short, sweet, simple presentation um but happy to answer folks questions <clears throat> yeah um can you hear me yep. okay so um i i need um <clears throat> excuse me i need a bit more um explanation on snapshot voting um, because I know I've, I've I've voted in snapshot I think twice yeah twice but um honestly I don't I don't really have a total idea about it all I know is that what he said is um it's um token weighted and um the number of banks you have uh, the the higher the power of the vote and all of that. So I, I don't really understand uh how it works basically. So I just need a bit more explanation on snapshots. Yeah, so essentially um ooh, let's see what we got. Um so essentially there's lots of different ways to vote. Um we call these voting strategies. Um, in the US, we have 
what folks like to call a, a representative democracy, which means that we don't directly vote in elections, but, but we elect people to vote and represent us in the national elections. And, you know, we're familiar with, you know, in the U.S., when we go to vote, we're one person, we vote as one person, you know, there's no legal way for me to get more than one vote. Um, that's one type of voting strategy. Um, without getting, you know, too deep into the U.S. election system. And cooperatives uh, that have been around for a long time, cooperatives often form and, you know, again, people have, you know, essentially a cooperative company and then the workers of that cooperative all have one person, one vote um, for a lot of the, the governance around, you know, a business cooperative, you know, we're familiar, you know, maybe with nonprofits. Um, nonprofits often have a board of directors that makes all the decisions. And so there's actually no democratic process for, you know, the members of a nonprofit to vote. Um, and with, with blockchain and with tokens, it allows us to create many more different types of voting strategies. So a common voting strategy in elections is called ranked choice voting. Um, when you have more than two people running in an election, um, you can actually vote for your preferences, you know, of, of one over another. Um, in the blockchain world, in you know, Gitcoin grants, you know, there's a voting strategy um, that's not one person, one vote. It's called quadratic voting. You know, it's not um, ranked choice voting. Uh, they have their own, like, algorithm and formula for deciding how funds get dispersed, you know, two different projects in their their grant thing. So in Bankless DAO, um, we have the bank token. The bank token is, you know, a labor token. We work for it, um, but it's also a voting token. And essentially, instead of one person, one vote, um, our voting system or voting strategy, not really voting system, but our voting strategy is that whenever you vote, however many bank tokens you have, that's the strength of your vote. So we can look back at this uh, shielded voting and we can see that, you know, I voted with 107,000 bank, I pool voted with 2 million bank. And so iced pools votes are worth 20 times more than my votes. Um, if I got the math right. Uh, and if Thinker, just underneath a million bank, his votes are just under half, you know, as powerful as iced cool. And in Snapshot, we can go down and see, you know, who's voted, um, how much bank they voted with. And ultimately, you know, 55,000 bank, you know, 53,000 bank. You know, we have people voting Web3 Chef, whoever they are. You know, they're voting with uh, 11,000 bank. And since this poll is, you know, essentially has 
either you know vote for you know it's a test but you either vote for number one or you vote for number two and then it totals up the amount of bank in all those votes and presents you with you know who won the vote um and so in this example 6.3 million bank was used to vote for vote number one and four million bank was used to vote vote number two again this was a test it's not really a, a actual decision but had this been some type of proposal the vote number one you know would have won the proposal does that make sense yeah yeah it does it does yep now it's much different than in guilds where we have people that's one person one vote um that makes some interesting things happen. Like if a bunch of people want to pay people for not doing work, one person, one vote, majority rules, they can do that. Um, in a weighted voting system, less likelihood that those people that want to get paid for not doing work would have a large number of bank. And so the hope would be the people that have been around for a while and have more bank would vote against paying people that didn't do work and you know you wouldn't have kind of weird dynamics pop up in governance no all right all right i think i i have a much more better understanding of what it is yeah and it's basically, you know, just each bank token gives you a vote. And essentially, what the bank token governs are the decisions in regard to the treasury, the Dow treasury. Um, because basically, if, if you're not requesting funding, or you're not requesting to use the bank brand in some way, your proposals don't need to go to snapshot your proposal may not even need to go to the forum you know you might just need to find a small group of people that agree to move forward in a certain direction and do it um you know you can if it doesn't depend on funding if it doesn't depend on using you know the dow resources in you know any weird way um you know you don't have to go through these formal processes so like we can see with the uh b dip number two about going to utc timing you know 14 million bank approved approved switching to utc there <laughs> can't believe that there were some people that voted to reject UTC time. <laughs> um, trying to see, we don't really have any uh, contentious votes that are like split in half. Um, and then I think, you know, if the one comment that was in the slides is correct and that snapshot votes need at least a 66% approval. Um, we could see that in this shielded voting test poll that, you know, the vote to approve vote one didn't quite get the 66% threshold. So this could tell us that there still needs to be more consensus or more, you know, discussion about this proposal in order to try to get a more definitive vote, you know, for a specific type of action. Um,
Any other questions? If not, we can call it a day. Sounds good. Thanks, Ernest. Yeah. Thank you, everyone.